Uh, Stanislao Pugliese, professor of modern European history at Hofstra University, has written a biography on Ignazio Silone, an Italian writer. And this book, uh, published last year, has already won a Franklin Prize, uh, Franklin Prize in Contemporary History. I'm pleased to see you again. Thank you, Vito. Okay, it's a pleasure to have you again. I've read the book and I liked it very much. Thank you. And thanks for uh, coming again, I know. My pleasure. Uh, uh, we soon I want to ask you specifically what I who is uh, Ignazio Silone in a sentence or two, then we'll go in more detail. Ignazio Silone was probably one of the most uh, important influential writers of the 20th century, especially when it came to anti-fascism and anti-communism. I see. And, uh, besides being a writer, major Italian writer, he was also a politician, if I'm not mistaken. He was one of the founding members of the Italian Communist Party Communist in January of 1921. Yes. Now, this is a biography. And this, the title says a, a biography of, not a biography of. A life of Ignazio Silone. Why uh, there's, a, there's a different meaning? Did you want? Yeah, at one point uh, I had seen uh, on the web or someplace that they had uh, put the title down as The Life of Ignazio Silone, but I insisted that it be A Life of Ignazio Silone in the sense that. It is not uh, the definitive biography of Ignazio Silone. And in fact, in the introduction, I make some comments about the ambiguous nature of biography, that it's probably never really possible to actually get to know someone completely to be able to write a definitive, the definitive biography. But also, probably, it's because you want to show Silone's, uh, a specific aspect of his Silone's why, uh, life, isn't it? Uh, yeah, also the, 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 possibility? the sense that it was very difficult. Even after nine years of research and writing and going to Piscina in Italy, uh, to say that you could really 100% know someone completely, that you could write the definitive biography. But then that's true for every sort of other work. It's impossible. Uh, probably. It's yeah. like you can never really a approach absolute truth or absolute knowledge. Uh, uh, now tell Tell me, before the, our previous uh, interview, we spoke about uh, Carlo Rosselli. Uh, he's also a socialist. And now that was a biography also. Right. This is a biography. Again, are you specializing in uh, biography, mm. uh, biographical mode well, of uh, writing well, I, history? Well, I, I didn't intend to write another biography. What had happened was that the Carlo Rosselli book in the year 2000 won the Premio Silone in Italy. And so I, w I had to go to Piscina, Silone's hometown, to accept the award. And uh, before I went, I was doing a little bit of research on Silone. I knew who he was. I obviously had read some of his books, but I didn't know too much about him. And in the process, I discovered that there was no biography in English on Silone. Obviously, there had been biographies in Italian. And in the course of a conversation with my editor at Harvard University Press, uh, I said, can you believe it? There's no biography of Silone in English. And he said, well, would you like to write one for us? Uh, and so one thing led to another, and, uh, but then uh, my editor left Harvard, and the book finally ended up at Farrar Strauss Row, being edited by Jonathan Galassi, who is uh, an outstanding editor. So, so it, it, you're not specializing in biographies? No, no. And uh, although I'm, there are many interesting people out there, I don't think I would write a third biography. I have already one for you. Uh, who's that? Frederick II of the oh, 12th well, century. Sister, okay, that's, that's out of my time frame. Yes, that's your the Middle time Ages. Frame. Yeah. But anyway, do you see in modern historic scholarship the, uh, the increase of writing in biography a way rather than uh, historic books? Right. In a sense, um, do you think that's the future where it's maybe more popular, more amenable, more well, attractive to read uh, history through biographies? Yeah, one of the things before I started writing the book was to, to look at other biographies, not on Silone, but just on biography in general. And I noticed that most Americans get their history from biographies. So, for example, every year there's like 10 biographies of Abraham Lincoln, and there are dozens of biographies on the founding fathers. And it seems that in America, at least, this is not true in Italy, but in America, most people like to get their history through biography. 
Um, and many of these biographies uh, turn out to be six, seven, eight, nine hundred pages long, uh, with the result that uh, the biographer sort of presents himself or herself as a kind of omniscient voice. In other words, that I've spent, you know, the last five or ten or fifteen or twenty years studying X, and I know everything about him, and I'm going to put every single thing that I've learned about him mm -hmm. into the biography. And to me, it seems a little bit of overkill. It seems a little too much. To really get to the essence of a person, I don't think you need 900 pages. And also, you, you can specialize or you know, focus on a specific aspect of uh, yes. a person's uh, life. Maybe the biography, the way I see it, is becoming ever more popular, probably because of the film industry. Uh, if you can present a story or history, uh, through the movies, probably in a, a book like this would be ideal in a sense. Oh, well, yours is uh, it's too intellectual to, to become a... I don't think your right. format is, um, right. is can be made into a movie. Perhaps as from there you, you can develop. But usually the biography also serves the filmmaker. It does. And uh, out of all the kinds of books that are adaptable to film, biographies are probably the easiest because there is a very clear beginning, a middle, and an end, uh, even though there might be some ambiguity about the life itself. Uh, and I think in the telling of, uh, I think you hit it on the head, which is that people want to hear a story. In other words, something with a beginning, a middle, an end, a narrative, something that holds together where the pieces are connected. Uh, there are some types of history that are not written that way. Not that they're better or worse, but they're just different. Silone, in a sense, thought the same thing, that he, it's better to present the story rather than tell, uh, no, telling the story rather than uh, doing politics or exactly. other things, right? Exactly. Wasn't he? And uh, I think he reached a point in his life where he realized that he could be much more effective and influential in the anti-fascist cause by being a novelist rather than, than being a politician. Let's go a little into his biography, uh, even though uh, you did not deal so much on it, but I think there's sufficient there. Uh, he, he comes, he is an Italian writer, but he really did not think he was going to become a writer. No, he had no uh, official training. Uh, he didn't uh, have like a university education. Uh, he might have known about the tradition of Italian literature, like any school child would have known. Uh, he was born on May 1st in 1900 in a small town in Abruzzo. Um, so he was an Abruzzese? He or? was Abruzzese, and that was extraordinarily important to him because all of his novels and all of his short stories take place in Abruzzo. Um, his father died when he was 11. Most of his brothers and sisters died in childhood. And then the great trauma of his life was the earthquake of January uh, 1915, which killed his mother. Uh, they, he, she was under the rubble. She was buried family. under the rubble of the house that collapsed. And, and even so his brother, one brother, younger His brother. brother was buried as well, but survived. And uh, then uh, when that was cleared up, it was just Salone and his brother, who then attended uh, Catholic schools. Uh, it, it's tragic that even this year, actually this year, 2009, uh, yes. uh, there was an earthquake in Abruzzo, in Aquila. Aquila, yes. Yeah. And Mario Fratti, the playwright Mario Fratti, comes from, from Aquila, the, yes. who is today uh, showing a f big film of uh, nine. nine. Yes. So that's congratulating him. Yes. But at the same time, the the earthquakes uh, really uh, are destroying. Uh, over Was it over 50% of the population was destroyed? Only in uh, Silonis. In, in Pescina, uh, 3,500 people died out of a population of 5,000. So that's 70% of the population 70%. killed in like 20 or 30 seconds. So after 1915, at the age of 15, uh, Silone became an orphan. An orphan, orphan along with his brother. Uh, they were taken in by an Homeless, homeless, homeless and well, poor. Uh, they were taken in by this extraordinary priest, Luigi Orione, who had set up schools around Italy even after the earthquake of 1908, which killed many more people, 100,000 people if not more. Uh, but Silone had always been attracted towards uh, radical politics, and he had been attracted to the peasant organizations in Pescin and Abruzzo.